We're finally onto the King Minion slot, and while I mentioned in the last video that the choices get harder because the minions get better, and there are fewer spaces available, for the King Minion, the choice was actually really easy. But before I explain why, I once again want to heap more praise onto the All-Star Faction choice. King Rex is by now a classic and iconic minion, and this pick brings power, but it also brings versatility. I can't think of a single pairing where this minion detracts from the partner faction. Again, it's another great support minion. And the reason why King Rex was such a great pick, and the reason why the King Minion slot was such an easy pick for me, is that King Minions are so often tied to the theme or mechanic of the faction that they're in. In general, they aren't splashable into any deck. I picked three examples on the slide, but you could really pick any faction, and the chances are that the ability is just too specific for a singleton faction that can't replicate that mechanic. There are others that aren't very niche and specific, but still tie into a particular mechanic or a style of play. And I picked two out, the Count plays into Destruction and Starlight plays into Swarm Strategies. If you major on these then actually they could be good picks. And then there are others such as Neatbot and Titania that are just too weak or underwhelming. Returning a minion to hand or playing an extra minion is alright, but I can't really get excited about that. So as I say, most are either too specific to their faction or they're more general but still tied to a mechanic or style of play, or they're just too underwhelming. There are fewer still that are general enough and good enough to be considered for something like this. Unfortunately for the three pictured, I'm actually using actions from these factions, so they're out. So really, there aren't many picks left now. Of the remaining power fives and above, these are the only ones that really stand out. They're fine, but they're a long way below the power level of my actual pick. I think this was the first minion I picked out, that's how quickly I knew I wanted it in my faction. Have you guessed what it is yet? Well, it's Eliza. And Eliza is absurd. So many factions have extra plays in some capacity, and to limit them to just one is unbelievably strong, and it can swing matchups that might have been unfavourable into favourable. Eliza single-handedly buys the faction time. It slows the pace of the game down, and it forces Swarm, Rush, or Combo factions to play at your pace. Additionally, any cards played outside of your turn count as extra cards, so you can guarantee that when Eliza's in play, if it's your turn, the most cards your opponent can play is one. No multiple specials, no Shinobi and Hidden Ninja, no Will Wheaton and Control Minion and so on. By slowing the game down, all players are progressing at a similar rate in the game. That means that any way you have of cheating extra victory points then puts you significantly ahead of the other players. I can't speak highly enough of this card. The only fringe downside is that by picking Eliza, I miss out on the solid card draw engine of Maria de Graw and Manners Bot. If you have both in play, then you're guaranteed to draw at least one card per turn. You use the talent of Manners Bot first, you look at the top card, if it's an action card you draw it, if it's a minion you put it back on top, and then you draw it again with Maria de Graw instead. But even that doesn't compare to Eliza. With Eliza picked, we then have our faction's minions. Starting at the top, we've got Eliza for the incredible ongoing ability and levelling the playing field against fast and combo decks. We then get Archmage and Stoneford. Archmage for the great value over time, and Stoneford for just being able to search for the exact action you need from 10 of the strongest actions in the game. That's followed by Invader, the Frog Prince, and Spartan. Invader because it's one of the strongest minions in the game and it's how we take the lead once Eliza slows the game down. The Frog Prince to replay the Eliza or the Invader from the discard pile. And Spartan just for the solid base sitter that if it's left long enough, it will win or come second on a base by itself. Finally then we have the Tenacious E, First Mate, Sprout, and Manners Bot. Manners Bot for some residual card draw. The Sprout to quickly access one of the other Power 2s or Power 3s, or to replay any minion potentially if you go for the Frog Prince. The First Mate is just a really solid, sticky minion that will help to win bases. And the Tenacious E, again, is just a sticky minion that generates massive value over time. So there we have it, my minions in all their glory. What do you think? Would you want to play against this faction? What would you have chosen differently? Let me know down in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.